Hello traders, it's Sunday, April 21st, and it's time for our weekly video. We've had some decent market action, so we're going to get into that in just a second. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you like the content that I'm producing, you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And by subscribing, you'll help me elevate the traffic to this YouTube channel so that I can teach more people how to trade. That ultimately is what I'm trying to do. This is a systematic trading approach that I teach and the best way for me to prove its efficacy is to go over the previous trades that we've highlighted, see how they've performed, conduct our market analysis, go through the systematic approach, and then find some new trades. Please go back and watch as many of these videos as you can. I think that you're going to see the quality of these picks and that this system really does work. So. Starbucks two weeks ago I had given you Starbucks as a really nice short and that was on April the 7th and you can see from here the stock made a nice move lower along with some market selling in the right part of the screen you're going to see a daily chart of the S&P 500 you can see the market has been selling off so after that Pick. We had a live event and I highlight, it highlighted a couple of other picks and during that event I highlighted CVS as a short. CVS was a very nice short on April 10th. You can see how it continued to drop from about $72 down to about $68. Really nice stuff. So yes, we got some follow through. Nice breakdown through this horizontal support and the 200 day moving average. So yes, CVS, really nice pick. So we also did a live event and I highlighted a couple of stocks. SPOT was a recent long that I highlighted. I believe this was last Sunday I highlighted this. And so last Sunday was right in here. I love the fact that the market had been showing some signs of weakness, but that the stock had not been pulled back. It had been able to hold all of these gains. However, Given that market weakness, we needed to tread very cautiously with any longs and we needed to make sure that the market was bouncing and at least getting above that AVWAPQ before we took any long positions. So you should not have been in SPOT. ACN, I like this short. I highlighted this a week ago Sunday, but I had mentioned that it was a little far from the EMA8. We'd like the stock to get closer to that EMA8 before we short it. Now you can see how time has elapsed and that EMA 8 has come in. I still like this short. This is some really nice selling pressure. So now I would expect to see another leg lower. Last Sunday, ON was actually closer to the EMA 8 and that provided a nice shorting opportunity. You've got this long-term horizontal trend line. These are our auto trend lines, by the way. You can see that was a beautiful intercept right in here and it's close to that EMA 8 so yes this was a really nice short from last Sunday. Wednesday we had our live event. During Wednesday's live event I highlighted Google as a long and again we did not know to what degree the market was going to be selling off. The caveat to buying Google earnings coming up was that the SPY would have to be above the 50 day moving average, this purple line right here. Didn't happen. So I provided CRWD as a short and the caveat there was that it needed to breach this 100 day moving average, which it did on the open Friday. And you can see how the stock sold off about $10 from that opening price. CRWD, really nice short we have been focusing on day trading. So let's take a look at the market. First of all, the market. Boy, I've heard a lot of people saying that they took a big hit in the last couple of weeks and I don't get it. Well, I get it, but I don't get it, okay? Some trading lessons you have to learn on your own. And I don't expect everyone to just act like robots and take everything that I say as gospel, but Thursday, April 4th, before the jobs report, right here, this long red candle. When I saw this, 
I jumped up on top of my desk and I shouted, danger, 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 as loud as I could. But a lot of people didn't heed that warning. It didn't mean get short. It meant danger. I don't know what is going to be happening. Get out of your long swing trades. Go to the sidelines. This was the first heavy selling pressure that we've seen, and we need to respect it. This was not a fluke. This was not an accident. We had 200% of the normal ATR off of a relative high. Look at these stacked red candles. Look at that unbelievable volume. But you didn't listen. You didn't respect it. Many of you did. Congratulations to you, okay? You have to pick up on these warning signs. These help us identify when we are going into a turn, to use a racing analogy. So there are going to be times when we want to take risk off and we want to evaluate the price action and we want to see what happens. Once the dust starts to settle, we're in the straightaway again. And that's when we can hit the gas. And that's when we can get aggressive. That move runs its course. We go into another turn and we reduce our risk. So this is not, trading is not something where you are all in all the time. There are cycles that you have to try in time because the market doesn't go straight up and straight down. So this is a big warning sign. If you took a hit in the last two weeks, I urge you, the best thing that you can do, you've paid for the lesson, okay? Trading tuition can be very expensive. And believe me, I've gone through a lot of lessons and I have paid a lot in tuition. But what I haven't done is I haven't repeated mistakes very often. I've already paid for the lesson. I don't want to pay for it again. And if I fail to learn it, then I am going to pay for it many times in the future. Once is enough for me. There are a lot of lessons to learn, so I don't want to make it sound as though, gee, you learn a couple of lessons and you're home free. No, there are a lot of lessons to learn. You got to make sure that you don't repeat them. That means taking very careful notes before the open, setting up your game plan, writing down what you expect the market is going to be doing, and then evaluating during the course of the day. At the end of the day, you update that log. It's like a trading journal. It's not just putting a couple of words behind a software program that you download your trades to. That does nothing for you. You have to describe all that was going on in the market. It changes every day. It's dynamic. There are a lot of influences happening each and every day that are new. That's what you have to write down. And then at the end of the day, you go through and you evaluate how well you did versus what you were expecting. At the end of the week, you can go through all of your trade logs for the week and you can start to form your game plan. You're going to find things that you did well and things that you didn't do well. And you'll be able to improve on the things that didn't go well and you'll also be able to take a look at all the information that came in the form of price action during the previous week. That is going to help you set up your game plan for the next week. And that's what I like to do on Sundays. This video is actually part of that process. So big sell off, huge, huge volume. This is your warning shot. I told everyone on this bounce Friday in the chat room, if you were out over your skis. You will get a bounce and you will get a chance to reduce that risk. Right in here, I can go back and look at the timestamps because I'm like, yeah, we've had a nice bounce. We've covered half of the range from the previous day approximately. This is where I would expect to see some resistance. This was your chance to get out of some of your lungs. But you didn't. Okay, now you've got a lesson. Learn from this lesson. It's so important to do. So here, I didn't know how deep this drop was going to be. To be very honest, it's deeper than I thought. But have I missed opportunities? No, I haven't. 
because in here I had also explained this is a time to reduce swing positions and to focus on day trading because we need to see how much more selling pressure there is behind it and we need to see how aggressive buyers are on any dip and we don't know that right now yeah people there was a good shorting opportunity up here and you could have made a lot of money on shorts i didn't miss a thing day trading look every single one of these candles opened higher the next day we had gaps up didn't miss a thing sell off close on the low gap up gap reversal the entire day you catch the whole move and then some because it recaptured that red candle so no i didn't miss anything there then we had uh tuesday this was monday's price action we blew through the 50-day moving average we've been below av wap q we're through the low from this long red candle through the close so that's also bearish so here, yes, we've got a lot of bearish things starting to happen. Monday was a big, long, red day. Chances of getting another one back-to-back, -back, pretty slim, especially given this market strength. But that was a doji that rested right on the low from Monday. That is a bearish sign. Why? Because after this heavy round of selling you would expect that if buyers had any interest they would have at least been able to retrace half of this long red candle never happened sellers kept a lid on the action and it closed right at the low from this long red candle never made an attempt at the 50-day moving average that's bearish so the next day Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday, we get a gap up. Another gap up. What did I miss by not being short? Nothing. Gap reversal. Okay, well, we expected that because we'd already seen that heavy selling pressure Monday. No follow through bounce on Tuesday. We're expecting more selling, and we got it. And then Thursday, Friday, now you've got the selling momentum closing near the low. Another gap up on Thursday another open Friday right where we closed Thursday. So what the hell did I miss by not being short? Nothing. But I'm day trading for the short from the short side because all the way in here, I want to gauge this selling pressure and I don't want to do anything longer term because we could have a long green candle and another one that goes right through the high. It could have been similar to this. We get this little dip, although these candles are longer in nature. Right in here, we still didn't know. In here, you could have had just a little long red candle and then a long green candle, and you would have been off to the races. We didn't know what to expect. Now we have new information. The new information is telling me that this is some pretty organized, heavy selling pressure. We are going to get a bounce. How do I know that? I know that because buyers have been super aggressive for the last five months. They are not going to go away. There is not any shred of news that I've seen that has dramatically changed the landscape. Okay, higher for longer. Is that new? The Fed has been saying that for a long time. Uh, maybe the economy in China is starting to slip. Well, I believe it is. Is that the factor? I don't know. I don't really care why people are selling. They just are. Earnings have been decent. The earnings that I've seen recently have been good. They haven't been horrible. TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor, posted really good earnings. They beat expectations. And they announced that in Q2, revenues are going to be up 30%. They guided higher. Stock still sold off because we're seeing some market pressure and we're seeing some pressure in some of the chip stocks so let them come in let them sell off we're into mega cap tech earnings i believe those are going to prop up the market as well the mega cap tech stocks have been leading the market higher why do i feel that way well i'm i don't really care as much about mega cap tech companies only that they're re reporting i'm really focused on this rally and the strength of this rally. 
That's what tells me we're going to get a dip and we're probably going to test the 100 day moving average and bounce off of it. How we bounce is going to determine how long I hang on to my long positions. So let's get into that right now. Back to mega cap tech companies, AI, 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 AI. AI is the next big thing. Okay, so nobody knows how companies are going to make money on AI. They just know it's going to be the next big thing. Well, companies that have the data, Apple, Google, Meta, Amazon, those are going to be your big players in that space. They've got lots of data that they'll be able to use to feed those AI engines. And since no one knows what the upside potential is, any developments in that area are going to keep a bid under the stock, even if the earnings aren't quite there. That's where the excitement is. It's all about AI. So I'm expecting mega cap tech companies to report decent earnings and to at minimum tread water. So we test the 100 day moving average and then I'm expecting a bounce. As I'd mentioned earlier, to be quite honest, this selling pressure is a little bit heavier than I expected. And so that tells me that I have to trim my expectations for what the bounce might be like because the selling pressure has been heavier. So on a bounce, I want to get above this long red candle. I want to close above it. I'm not talking about intraday price action. I want to close above it. And in the process, I'd like to see a long green candle off of that 100 day moving average. If I get that exact pattern, then I'm going to be expecting the bounce and I'm going to be buying the strongest of the strong that are leading the market higher. I'm not looking for stocks that have been rolling over like this. I'm looking for stocks that have been marching higher already. And if I'm wrong on the market and I'm early and there's another leg down, those stocks that are marching higher will hold up very, very well. I'll be able to exit the position for a scratch, maybe even make a little bit of money. Certainly any losses on those stocks are going to be very minimal. Why? Because buyers are already in there. This is our edge. This is our trading edge. If I'm trading the S&P 500 futures and I'm predicting a bounce in here and I get it wrong and the bottom falls out, I am going to lose my shirt. But if I'm trading stocks with relative strength, where institutions have already shown an appetite for them, they are going to be buying because they're not going to be worried about some little one day or two day blip. They are buying these stocks for position a year, two years, three years out. So they're undeterred by that. And that's why this relative strength system works so well. So again, I'm looking for a bounce off this 100 day moving average. I believe we're going to get it because the Buyers have been all lined up for a long time. They've been waiting for a dip. They finally have a dip. We're on the eve of mega cap tech earnings. Those have been the stocks that have led the market higher. So how we bounce, if we get a nice long green candle, I'll take starter positions here. Then I want to see us attack the 50 day moving average with a couple more stacked long green candles. And I want to close above it very easily. So if we get this bounce this week by Friday, I want to be closing above the 50 day moving average, period. If I get that, I will even consider adding to my long positions. If we kind of mamby pamby start kind of grinding higher, mixed overlapping candles, no real momentum, kind of nudge our way up to the 50 day moving average. I'm not interested. I'm going to be more inclined to look for exit point on my longs. If I see that kind of mamby pamby price action, like this kind of garbage, this mixed overlapping stuff in here, that's not what I want here. What I want right here, that is what I want right here. If I get this price action and I'm not expecting it, then I will add to my long positions when we get through the 50 day moving average and through AVWAPQ 
And this type of price action would tell me that we are going to blow through the all time high. And don't think that just because we've seen this, that we can't get that type of move. Be very, very careful in here because everybody is super bearish right now out of nowhere. I mean, we've had two weeks worth of selling pressure and everybody's gone from gaga, gotta have it, bullish mode right here to, oh no, the sky is falling. Well, I'm telling you, when these shorts cover, and there are plenty of shorts out there, that short covering is going to fuel this bounce. We just need to see how high it goes, okay? So I'm not looking for this kind of garbage in here, getting through the 50 day. I'm looking for this to add to my longs. If I get this, I'm going to be looking to take gains on my longs, and then I'm going to be watching for a lower high double top because that type of bounce is going to tell me sellers are still there. That is how we read price action. So let's go through and let's take a look at a similar setup. And we had one back last year. So nice rally, okay? Get a little bit of a pullback here. That's a bullish flag. This dip is not that daunting. It's brief, it's shallow, we recover the AVUAPQ instantly, and then we have another leg higher. Now we start compressing and getting into a horizontal trading range, just like we've been for about the last month or so. Long, red, bearish engulfing candle. Warning sign, warning sign, warning sign off of a relative high. You still got a couple days to head for the sidelines, but if you miss that opportunity, whoosh. And look at how strong that selling pressure has been. Very similar to what we've seen right now through AVWAPQ, through the 50-day moving average. And so now we get the bounce. Look at how tall this bounce is. It is fairly tall. It's about 300 S&P points, so it's considerable. You can also see that there are mixed overlapping candles in here. So this is not a super powerful surge higher and then it starts to run out of steam. If I see this, now I'm respecting that selling pressure and I'm looking at a double top lower high and I am ready to exit my long positions and I'm ready to start consider considering some shorts. So you get a little bit of a pullback right here. Is this where I'm adding because now I've got the double top? No, I still want more confirmation because you could get a little pullback to the 50 day, whoosh, higher. But that's not what happens. Now we get these mixed overlapping candles and on this pullback, buyers can't get that thing going. And eventually you start to see the price action soften. Now we're starting to spend more time below the 50 day moving average, can't get above it. We break below AVWAPQ, we're below the 50 day moving average, long red candle. We use this low from that dip as an anchor point for a trend line. And now we can see we're also through that upward sloping trend line. So we've got 50 day AVWAPQ, we've got a broken trend line, we have a lower high double top. This is where I can get aggressive with my shorts follow through add follow through add get a nice deep trough down to the 200 day moving average don't wait for a breakdown take your gains you're gonna get a bounce because we know that from the choppy nature of this pullback here you get your bounce you're still below the major moving averages you're compressing now you're starting to break below support again this is where you can short again this is the kind of approach that you have to do when you're shorting. And the most important thing that I can teach you is that the market goes in cycles. And so we're evaluating price constantly and we're looking for technical confirmation. So when we're heading into a turn, we take our foot off the gas. We wait till we're through the turn and we wait till we're in the straightaway and then we punch it. And we punch it hard because we know that on a bounce like this, we're going to have a decent opportunity to make some money. 
when we start to see this bounce fail and the momentum wane, take a pause. Now we wait and wait and wait. Are we going to attack that high? If we are, cool, I'll wait for that and I'll trade that and I'll add on a new breakout to the upside. If we start to roll over, okay, I've got all the warning signs. Now I'm ready to hit the straightaway and hit the gas here. Taking trades off here, starting to compress, rally up. Okay, we've got a nice bounce. We're starting to see weakness here. Okay, this is where I start considering short positions. Ah, there's my breakdown. Hit the gas. Okay, in here, big breakdown. Now we're starting to get through these long red candles here. All right, this is where I want to take gains on my shorts. We could get a nice bounce in here. I've already gotten back above the open from this long red candle. That's how we need to time our entries. This long red candle right there, I already told you 500.50 on SPY, my alert is set. If we close above that level, I am going to be looking to take long positions. I believe we're gonna see a nice bounce and then I'm gonna evaluate how we bounce. Gonna cut this video short. I'm just gonna go into uh, Green Royal Flush. It's one of my favorite searches. Again, I am looking for stocks that have already been moving higher when the market is moving lower. And so I'm just going to go into, actually I'll go into heavy buying because I know that's got some nice stocks. Yes, bouncing after earnings through AVWAP, E, nice, trying to get through the EMA8. This is weaker than I'd like to see. Just going to go through and look. Bouncing, J&J, &J, Abbott, nope, WFC, yes. I highlighted this last week in the chat room. I like it. We've got a compression here. We have a breakout through a longer term high plus trend line. Love it. Market down, stock breaking out. Very, very good. I like BAC also. And I highlighted WFC in my chat room last Thursday. So it's not going to be my pick of the day. BAC is going to be my pick of the day. You can see you've got this downward sloping trend line right in here. Stock was able to get above it. It's above all the major moving averages. Nice rally. It's above the opening from the announcement date and the market has been going down and the stock has been going up. I believe that BAC is going to get back to the high, which is 3835. And if the market attacks the 50 day moving average and it attacks AVWAPQ, it will be able to break out and make a new relative high. If I get those two components, I will add to the position. If I get this wimpy bounce that struggles to get back to the 50 day moving average in AVWAPQ, if the bounce has mixed overlapping candles and no real momentum, then I'm going to take profits at that all time high and see what the market does from that point on. And I suspect, I mean, there's been a lot of bearishness in a very short amount of time. So I think there are a lot of people who are loaded up on shorts. If I see stacked long green candles, it is going to rattle these shorts and they are going to be forced to cover. And that could give us a really nice big bounce upward. Throw some good earnings in from uh, the mega cap tech companies and that could add fuel to the fire and then we could see that bounce. So yes, this is a little bit deeper and a little bit more steady than I had expected. I will be trading this bounce. I'll be evaluating the bounce. I'm gonna hit the straightaway. I'm gonna have my pedal to the metal if we break through these levels with ease. That's how I'm trading it. Please leave your questions and comments, everybody. They motivate me to keep doing these videos, so I love to hear how your trading is going. Please learn from this experience. That was a warning sign. I was as vocal as I possibly could be about it. You need to head to the sidelines. You need to reduce your risk exposure and then see what happens. See how things settle out. And then this information is going to give us really good knowledge that we'll be able to use for the bounce. And possibly, maybe there will be a short that's going to be setting up for this summer. I don't know. We'll see. Good luck with your trading. We'll see you soon.
Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.